Hey class, we're going to be doing some asynchronous work today, so I'm going to spend a few minutes uh, working on these next two sections. Hopefully you saw in Teams that I left two uh, videos for you to watch that I found that I thought explain explicit formulas for both arithmetic and geometric fairly well. And so I'm also going to be doing a few problems here in Delta Math to kind of support you. So let's do a few. <clears throat> so the, next, the first one it says, let's write a sequence uh, explicit formula uh, for the nth term of 5, negative 30, and 180. So the first thing we have to do is think about, well, where do these numbers fall in terms of arithmetic or geometric? Is the pattern more based on uh, multiplication and division, or is it more adding and subtracting? So if you try to uh, figure out what number gets you to negative 30, uh, I think if you divide negative 30 by 5, you're going to get negative 6. And then if you multiply negative 30 by negative 6, you get 180. So let's try that. 5 times negative 6 is negative 30. Multiply that by negative 6, and you get 180. So if I take the second number and divide by the first number, you are getting what's called the common ratio. And so I'm going to be using this particular formula here. And so the sequence was 5, negative 30, uh, 180, and so forth and so forth. So yesterday we talked about how this A1, this very first value in the sequence, for this sequence it would be the number 5. Well then that common ratio, when we found the common ratio between these was negative 6. And then this N minus 1, that is a part of every answer for the formula for a geometric sequence. And that way when you plug in 1, you get out the first number 5. When you plug in 2, you get out the second number, negative 30. When you plug in 3, you get 180, and so forth. And so I can test this. For example, I can say, well, when n is 3, I should get out 180. So 5 times negative 6 raised to the 3 minus 1. See, I get exactly 180. Or if I was to put in 2, it's going to give me that second number, negative 30. Or if you were to plug in 1, you get out that first number. Oh, I didn't plug in 1, sorry. If you plug in 1, you should get that very first number, which was uh, 5. I'm still messing that up. 5 multiplied negative 6 raised to the 1 minus 1, negative, or positive 5 rather. So whenever I'm trying to answer this question, I'm going to say 5 was the first number, negative 6 was the common ratio, and then if you press this little uh, keyboard button, you can raise to a different power, and then you can just put the x minus 1. But they're using n, so I'm going to use n minus 1, and that should be correct. <clears throat> So if you'll look through the example, they'll show you exactly how they found the common ratio and then how they plugged all the values in. So let's look at another one. This one is 15, 23, 31. So with this one, this sequence feels more linear or more arithmetic, meaning if you add a value, I think you're going to get the rest of these. So let's subtract the, the second and first number. So if I do that, I get 23 minus 15, and that is 8. So that means if you do 15 plus 8, you get 23. And if you add 8 again, you're going to get 31, which is that next number. So that means that this is an arithmetic sequence. 15, 23, 31. And basically that common difference value is an 8. So let's talk about how we use the formula. 15 is the first number. And in the formula, the D stands for common difference, which for this problem is 8. And then N minus 1 is still a part of the parenthesis. Now there is some cleanup here. 15 plus, we're going to distribute because this is representing multiplication. So 8 multiply 8, uh, sorry, 8 multiply N would be 8N. And then 8 multiplied negative 1 would be negative 8. And so 8n doesn't have a like term, but if you do 15 minus 8, just to simplify this, you get 7. And so this right here is our answer. 
this is our formula so that if you plug in 1, 8 times 1 is 8, plus 7, you get 15. Or 8 times 2, plus 7, 23. 8 times 3, plus 7, is 31. So I'm going to put in 8 in plus 7. And let's see if it likes my answer. It does. So again, A1 represents the first number in the sequence. The D stands for common difference. That's the pattern of adding or subtracting in the formula. And then once you clean it up, you will get your final answer. So I'm going to do another one. This one seems to be also a arithmetic. You're adding 3 over and over and over. So let's just start over with this one. This would be 28, 31, 34. So the first thing I think about is this seems to be adding 3 over and over. If you do 31 minus 28, you'll see that 3. So I'm going to start using the formula now. 28 is the first number. You are adding 3 each time. And then n minus 1 is just a part of the formula. We're going to take a moment to simplify that a little bit by distributing. This is multiplication. 3 times n, 3n. And if you multiply 3 times negative 1, you get negative 3. So like the other one, we have some simplification to work on. 3n doesn't simplify, but 28 minus 3 is 25. And now, if you were to replace 1 for the n value, you will calculate 28. If you plug in 2, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 25, 31, and so forth for the rest of the sequence. So 3n plus 25 goes right here. And then that's my answer. So I'm going to do one last one that is geometric before we stop. So this one, if you notice, is getting small really, really quickly. And so I want to start by doing 40 divided by 200. And that gives me a decimal, which really represents one-fifth as a fraction. So basically 200 times one-fifth is how I've got to 40. And if you do 40 times a fifth you will also get 8. So when I'm building the sequence, you have to say the first number is 200. I'm multiplying by 1 divided by 5, because I think students struggle with that sometimes. And then I'm going to raise that to the n minus 1. And if you have trouble raising stuff, you can do Shift 6, or you can do the keyboard and click the A to the B power, and then put in n minus 1 for your power. So I hope this video is helpful. We're, I'm going to jump on uh, Teams probably around 9.30 or 9.45 if anyone has any questions. Otherwise, uh, we will clean this up next time we're in class. Thank you so much.